Being the fastest blockchain on the market today doesn't come easy. It comes with its own set of problems. Chain size. Take Bitcoin, for example. Bitcoin just celebrated its 10th birthday. It's currently sitting on a chain the size of only 200 gigabytes. And Ethereum, adding a new block every 15 seconds. Ethereum only has a chain size of 140 gigabytes after three years in operation. The EOS IO mainnet launched less than one year ago and adding a new block to the chain every half second, the chain has already grown to four terabytes. What happens when EOS reaches its 10th birthday? With RAM and CPU costs skyrocketing, this scaling issue must be addressed. Hi, I'm Leslie Haas, and this is EOS USA News. Today, I'm sitting down with David Pence of EOS USA to discuss the current state of EOS and what the EOS USA team is doing to strengthen the community. What about the splintering effect that I keep hearing about? Um, is that a good way to reduce costs? Uh, splintering multiple chains has been the only solution uh, because think about it, if the EOS chain has been tested as fast as say 4,000 transactions per second and the D apps can only push in or buy or rent or whatever so much RAM or storage, then it's limited in a little sandbox. Well, one way to have more apps created is to say, well, gosh, we're maxing out EOS because we're using the heck out of it. I mean, yeah. most of the apps that are on and Ethereum. And it's still in its infancy. It's, it's a little baby. Yeah. Most of the apps on Ethereum, the top 50 apps on Ethereum have moved over to EOS, right? And so they're just blasting it, blasting it. It's a little sandbox. It's like, well, I'm a baby. So they said, well, what can we do quickly? Well, mm -hmm. we can create more. Here's an example. Back in the 80s and 90s, Intel made a processor with a single core. In other words, it had one brain. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't make it any faster. They couldn't make And the demand was so high, they said, we're going to dual core quad core. Well, now you can buy servers that have like 40 cores or something in one chip. So the old CPU that had one brain now has 40 brains. Well, EOS did the same thing. So gosh, we've got EOS mainnet, but the demand is so high from all these DApp producers. Let's create multiple chains. And so, you know, that's the current scenario, but hopefully EOS mainnet will um, continue to grow. I know it will. I'm very excited about it. And uh, it'll be able to take on more, especially with the whole idea of having a middleware to handle the dApps and then report to the mainnet, which is coming, you know, a great version of that's coming with uh, Liquid Apps. Well, and that leads me to my next question. Could Liquid Apps stop the splintering effect? Absolutely. I think it will help reduce it. Now, you got to understand that from baby to adolescent, I, think, I still think there's going to be splintering. There, there literally could be a thousand or more EOS chains because it's a it's an open source free thing. Right. So if you and I wanted to start mega chain tomorrow using EOS, we could, we could do it. Right. Um, so you think there's constantly going to be stress on the chain for the foreseeable future? Yeah, I think the demand to move the world's data and old business processes and some capital to the blockchain mm -hmm. is so high that I don't think people realize the demand is that high. It's just smoking high. You talk to the D app developers, they're like, yeah, we're you know, the price of RAM went up this high, so we had to move over to another chain where it has a lower price of RAM. Well, the price of RAM is because the sandbox is turning bright orange. You know, I can't handle it. Yeah, So as the, it's on fire. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of, think about it, it came out in July. We're on 1.0. Yeah. So two or three years from now, maybe four years from now, when we're on EOS 3, oh my gosh, pow. Yeah. It, it'll just be unbelievable. As a block producer, why is EOS USA in a prime position to become a DApp service provider? We're one of the most compliant uh, block producers in the world. EOS USA has more of the checkboxes on the scorecards than uh, I think there's about 500 block producers right now, mm -hmm. and I think we're up in number. We're in the top 10, you know, of all. That's huge. It's huge. So we're we're stable. Uh, we're actually getting ready to open our second node in April, and so we will be um, redundant in multiple countries. And then so the thing about DSP is. A DSP would like to be close to the BP, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, the, the DSP ideally would be able to just talk right next door to the BP and say, hey, is that true? Or shove this in or pull this out. If it has to go across a wide area network or something like that, there can be outages or something and it can cause problems. So I think DSPs who are also BPs will have the highest uptime. And obviously a DSP, if, you're, if I'm a D app, say I make a gambling app or something like that, whatever app it is, I need to be up gambling. and running. We need to be up and running, right? Yeah. Oh, we're down. No more poker today. That's terrible. So right. ultimately, you want to be you want to be bonded together. You want that middleware as close to the primary ware as possible, 
and that's what we offer. EOS USA has just achieved four check marks on EOS Nation's Block Producer Scorecard, and we're weeks away from a fully synchronized history plugin. Please help us continue our contribution to the EOS community by voting I Vote for EOS USA on your next ballot. For more EOS IO related information, visit our website at eosusa.news. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and leave your comments. My name is Leslie Haas. Thanks for watching.